All right, so we're gonna talk about how to express or how to represent functions. There are three typical ways you do this. The first one is symbolically, and that's gonna be using numbers and letters, and stuff like that. We'll, we'll give you several examples of each kind. The second way to do it is with tables. And the third way to do it is with graphs. Okay, so we'll show you an example of each kind. So, symbolically, I hope I'm spelling that right. This just means when we talk about like a function, if I say f of x is equal to 3x plus 7, that I am using symbols here. So symbolically comes from the word symbol. And so all I'm using is using letters and numbers to represent a rule, okay? Because that's what we said, right? A function is a rule. You may also see something like y is equal to 2x minus 3 or something like that. That's in slope-intercept form. Hopefully you remember that a little bit from Algebra 1, pre-algebra. <clears throat> okay? So this is how we represent with symbols. It's fairly straightforward. You may see other things like, you know, g of x equals... 2x squared minus 3x over 4 minus 7 or something like that. Anytime you write it out with symbols, you're expressing it symbolically. Uh, one function that I do want to focus on and show you how it's... Uh, we're going to do one function and show you how each of the three forms represents that function. So, And that function is going to be h of x is equal to 1 half x plus 3. So remember this function because we're going to be talking about this function... Um, with tables and with graphs, okay? So um, the nice thing about symbolically representing a function is that it literally tells you the rule, right? So we said a function is a rule that assigns, it basically tells inputs what to do so that they can become an output, right? So um, the one of the drawbacks of symbolically representing functions is that sometimes it's kind of hard to visualize what a function does. Okay, and most of the ones I've drawn for you here are pretty easy. Like this is just, hey, take half of the original number and then add three to it. Like that's pretty straightforward. This function I feel like might be hard to visualize, you know. So that's a drawback of symbolically representing functions. The next way that you can represent functions is with a table. Okay, so the next way is with tables. And the one that you're probably going to see the most often is an XY table. So what we're going to do is we're going to put X on the left, we'll put Y on the right, and then typically what we'll do is just, you know, so we'll start, we'll go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So these are some X values, these are the input values, and then the output values that go with these might be something like 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, something like that. Okay, so we have a function here, at least it appears to be a function, and I don't know exactly what the rule is to figure out how we get from the input to the output in each case, but we could probably figure it out. Okay, so this is a fairly typical table. Tables come in different shapes and sizes, so you may see something like x and then f of x, right? So it's the same idea. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, you know. And they don't always give the exact same inputs and outputs. Like on this one, the inputs are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. On this one, they start at negative 3, and they only go up to 1. Okay, so. And, yeah, I'm just going to make some numbers up here. 8, 10, negative 3, 4, and 6, something like that. Okay, that's a table that represents presumably a function. Okay. You may also see tables stacked um, sideways. So you may see something like this where you have the inputs and then the outputs down here. You know, you might see it like that. Three, five, six, nine. I'm just making things up here. Negative two, one, four, six. You might see tables like that. You may also see tables that don't have x and y in them at all or x and f of x. And that's okay because... Functions are a little 
abstract. They don't necessarily have to take numbers and transform them into numbers. You might see something that does time and distance. So maybe on this part over here, we put the time of day, 1130, and then we put how far somebody was away from us. So let's say somebody's driving away at 1130. They were five miles away. At 1230, they were 54 miles away. At one o'clock, they happen to be 87 miles away, something like that. That would be a function. You could describe the distance based off of the time. Okay, so, so, so if I gave you a time, you could tell me the distance, or you could at least kind of guess, right? So if we're between 1230 and 1, assuming that this person's heading away from us, we know that it's probably somewhere between 54 and 87 miles, okay? All right, let's use our... Um, <clears throat> oh, and one other thing I was going to say is you may see in a table, I'm going to go back over to um, this one right here for just a second. You may also see multiple table configurations stacked on top of each other. So maybe in this table, we've got f of x and g of x all at the same time. So 5, 7, 3, 4, and 2. Something like that. Okay, so don't be surprised if you see a table that has um, one input but multiple output functions. So here's a function and here's a function and clearly they're doing different things with the input, right? If the input was negative 3, f of x somehow turns it into 8. g of x somehow turns it into 5. And one of the fun things to do is to try to figure out what the rule is for these. Okay, so... All right, uh, let's actually continue on with our h of x function. So you'll re recall h of x was 1 half x plus 3. So let's go ahead and make a table for h of x. And there's no one right way to make a table here because there's many different things we could possibly put in and leave out. But I'm just going to do an xy table. And let's just keep this simple, and I'm just going to put in like 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8 for the input values on this function. Okay, so let's think about this. If, if I was going to plug in 0 for x here, so come back up to the symbolic representation. If I was going to plug in 0 here for x, what would the output value be? Okay, what would h of x be? Or in other words, what would y be? A lot of people don't realize this, but h of x and y are essentially the same thing. Okay, they're, they're just the output after you take the input and run it through the rule, run it through the function. Okay, so if I plug in 0 here for x, I would get half of 0, which is just 0, plus 3. So that would be 3. If I plug in 2 for x, I would have half of 2, which is 1, so this part right here would be 1, and then I would add 3. So that would give me 4. If I plug in 4 for x, so I'm just going down the table here. If I plug in 4 for x, I would get half of 4, which is 2, plus 3, which is 5. If I plug in 6 for x, then I would get half of 6 is 3, plus 3 is 6. And then if I plug in... 8, I would get half of 8 is 4 plus 3 is 7, okay? So you get some interesting patterns here. Notice how these go up by 2s, but these only go up by 1, and that has to do with the slope there. So anyway, this right here is the symbolic representation of h of x. This right here is the tabular, we call it the tabular or table representation of h of x. And Let's just say, to be consistent here, since I'm calling it h of x, let's actually call it h of x instead of y. Okay? All right, so let's look at some graph forms now. Okay, so now we're going to talk about graphical interpretations. Okay, or graphs. Okay, and this is just a standard cubic function over here. So you've got the function just kind of goes up and then down and then up again. What's interesting about this and what I want to point out to you is that we may ask, I may say, hey, what is f? Oh, I may ask you, what is f of 5? Okay, so if 5 is the input, <clears throat> what's the output? Okay, and so what you do 
is generally the way that we read these is that we understand that the x-axis here, these are our inputs. And then the y-axis here, going upwards, this is the y-axis, these are our, our, our outputs. And so the question is, if you input 5, so like if we go over to where the 5 is for the inputs, the question is, where does the output land? And all you have to do is just look. If you look up here, the output is right here. And the question for the output is not what, what this number is, it's what this number is over here. Okay, so if I input 5, you look up here, it corresponds with 6 over here. Okay, so we, we would say f of 5 equals 6. In the same way, I might ask you, okay, what's f of 8 here in this case? If I plug in 8 for the input, what do I get for the output? Well, let's go over it. The inputs are here, so let's go over to 8 for the input, and then we go up and look at our graph. This this right here is the output. So what is the output for 8? Well, if you come over, it's 3. 3 is the y value that gets paired with the x value of 8. Okay, so that would be 3. Uh, okay, so what if I said, and this is where it gets a little weird and tricky, what if I said f of x is equal to f of x is equal to 2? And I want to know what is x. So now the question is, it's not if I put in 2 as the input, because 2 is not the input. The x value is always the input. And then the output always comes over here. So the question is asking, if the output value happens to be 2, what's the input value? Okay. So let's look at it. So let's go over to the graph. If we look at the output value of 2, that puts us at about right here, okay? So I probably should have done this a little better here, but the output value of 2 gives us an input value of about, I don't know, what is that? If you scroll down and look, about 3.25, okay? So you may see questions like that. Okay, what about this? If, oh, that's not what color I want. Let's go to white. If, if f of x, or if the output value is three, what is x? So if the output value is three, what is x? So let's come over and look at the graph. So the output value is 3. That means the output value is over here. The question is, what's the the x value that would create that y value? So you scroll down, and it looks to me like about 3.5 there. Okay? So you would say, well, x must equal 3.5 to get an output value of 3 like that. Okay? So this is where the graphs come in handy. The graphs are super nice because they let you visualize what's happening to the outputs when you work with the inputs. Some functions grow really big really fast and it's helpful to have a graph to just kind of visualize that and see that, okay? It's also really nice because um, we can use graphs like in physics if you wanna model the position of like a football when you throw it, you can actually use a graph to do that. Like we actually know that a football follows the path of a parabola when you throw it through the air. No matter where you release it from, or how fast you throw it. It's always going to follow a parabola because of gravity. Some other graphs that you can work with, you'll see all sorts of things. Like you'll see, this is called a sine wave here, but basically you've got a function that just kind of goes up and down and up and down. And so a lot of times we will use graphs just to visualize um, phenomena that we experience and witness in the real world. So the last thing I wanted to talk about as far as graphical representations is to bring us back to our original function h of x. So you'll remember h of x was 1 half x plus 3. Our table representation 
was 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and this was 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now what you've got visually over here is you have the graphical representation of the symbolic function and the table function here. And, oh shoot, I put y there. I should put h of x. h of x. They're the same thing, but... So if you look over here, if you look at the x, y values, remember, so these are the x values and these are the y values here. Okay, so when x is zero, what does y equal? So look at x when x is zero. So these are the x's. Let's draw that in again, just to remind you. So these right here are the x values. And these right here are the y values. So the question is when x is zero, that would be here, what's the y value? The y value is three, okay? When x is two, what is the y value? The y value, or the output value, h of x is four, and you will you can verify this. So go over to two for x, look over at y, y happens to be four there. How about when x is four, y should be five. When x is four, is the y value five? It sure is. So these are three different ways that we can represent functions that all give us a little bit of insight into those functions.